All right, last section. We're going to do system of quad solving quadratic systems. Okay, so hopefully you remember how to do some of this stuff. I'm not. I'm going to try to keep this one shorter, but we'll see because there's a couple pieces to these. Okay, when we're solving quadratic systems, we have to graph and we have to do it algebraically. I have to say I love the pictures these make when I graph the quadratic systems. Okay, so the first thing is if the graphs of a system of equations are conic sections and a line, the system may have one or may have zero, one, or two solutions. So if we're dealing with a conic section and we're dealing with a line, then there could be one or one, zero, one, or two solutions. So let's look at the first problem that I gave you on the notes. So number one, y squared minus 3x squared equals 6. And then I also have y equals 2x minus 1. Okay, well, that top one there is x squared is negative. So therefore, that's a hyperbola. So we have a hyperbola. It's not in the right form, so we're going to have to put it in the right form. But the first thing you need to do is deal, figure out what you're dealing with. Okay, and then we have a line. So the first step is to get the equations in graphable form. So y equals mx plus b is fine. But the other one is not. The hyperbola is not in the right form because the hyperbola has to equal 1. So let's put our hyperbola in the correct form. So that means there's no completing the square that needs to be done here. I just have to make sure it's equal to 1. So I need to divide both sides, everything by 6. So I really have y squared over 6 minus x squared over 2 equals 1. So that's what I'm going to graph from. And the other one is already equals y equals 2x minus 1. That's already in graphable form because that's y equals mx plus b. All right, so these are the two we're going to graph. So the second step is to graph them both. Okay, so we're going to graph these two. And let's see if I might have to make this a little smaller so we can fit it off. All right, let me graph these. I'm trying to remember how much room I need by looking at my notes. And right, let's graph the line first because that's pretty easy. The lines start, hopefully you guys have found lines pretty easy. And it might be a good idea to color code these at this point. So negative 1 is my y-intercept. My slope is 2 over 1, up 2 and over 1, up 2 and over 1. And I'm going to do my best to make this line beautiful. Okay, our line's done. So I did the line in orange. All right, now I need to look at my hyperbola. So there's going to be a lot of mess going on here. The first thing I need to do is get my asymptotes in place. So I need to put a 0, 0. And then the square root, let's see, I did this and I didn't write it down. The square root of six looks like it's two point something or other. So I'm gonna go up, and I know that's up because it's under the six. So I'm gonna go up one, two, and a little bit. I'm just looking at my graph that I made. Okay, and then the square root of two is one and a little bit. Okay, so this is why we can't get an exact answer from graphing, because I just said one and a little bit. I mean, how can I get an exact answer? And then I'm gonna make my asymptotes so that I know where to put it. And now let's see who was negative. The x squared is negative. The y squared is positive. That means this is an up-down hyperbola. So let's graph it here and here. What does it look like? Where does it cross? It looks like it has two solutions. It looks like it crosses at, and it does, it crosses here but I can't really tell where because these drawings aren't very good, and here. So I know I'm looking for two solutions, okay? So there's my two solutions where they cross. All right, so what's next? Well, next is going to be solve algebraically, and this is the steps for all of them, either substitution or elimination, whichever one works easier. And I hope you remember how to solve these. Okay, let me make sure I know how to spell elimination. All right, so in this case, I know that substitution is going to work better because I did this problem already because I already have it solved for y equals. Pretty much substitution is only really going to work if you're dealing with a line. 
Okay, so I have two things going on here. Let's rewrite the equations. I'm going to rewrite them in their original form because it's easier that way. I don't have any denominators or anything. And there's no need to have it in another form. So I'm going to keep it in this form so we don't have any fractions. So I'm just copying them from the original problem. Okay, because I know that y is 2x plus 1, I'm going to replace y with 2x plus 1. Now, you got to be really careful here. There's some fun algebra here. So I have 2x minus 1. Sorry, I said plus 1, didn't I? It's minus 1 squared, because that's instead of y. And then I'm going to write the rest of the problem the way it was. I replace the y with that. Now, remember, this means 2x minus 1 times 2x minus 1. And then we still have this mess here. So we have to foil our... Um, box this. So that gives me 4x squared minus 2x minus 2x plus 1 minus 3x squared equals 6. Now I'm going to put like terms together. I can put 4x squared and negative 3x squared together. So that's going to give me x squared. And then I can put together negative 2x and negative 2x, so that's going to give me negative 4x, and then I have a 1 over here, and a 6 over here. I'm still not done. Now, since I have a quadratic, I need, hopefully, this factors, or I have to use quadratic formula. So now i got to subtract a 6 from both sides. So I have x squared minus 4x minus 5 equals 0. This actually factors. There's a lot going on here, so you might need to pause and think. I'm not going to teach you how to factor. I have lots of videos on factoring, so if you need help with factoring, go to my YouTube channel. I have the trash method on there. I have just GCF. I have how to make the how to do the magic X's. I have the grouping method, and I have the box method. So if you need some help with graphing, they're all there. Zero product property. So x minus five equals zero. X plus one equals zero. So then what do we have? Oh my gosh, there's a lot to this. So now we know x equals 5 and x equals negative 1, but we're not done. I know, I know. The final step is to find the y value. Because remember, what are we looking for? We're looking for where these two cross. If we're looking way back here, when we started this problem, for these green dots, I need an x and a y value. So I know one of them's 5, and one of them is negative 1. See, I'm totally off in my drawing. But I need to know what the y value is of this point. And so i got to plug it back in. Okay, so let's start with where x equals 5. If x equals 5, it doesn't matter which equation, so I'm going to pick the easy one. I'm going to go y equals 2x plus 1, that minus 1. That was the original. I keep saying plus 1. That was the original equation for the line, and I picked that one because it's easier than the other one. So y equals 2 times 5 minus 1. So the y value is, why am I getting, oh, no, I got that, it's 9. So my first point up here, this is 5, 9. You can see my drawing is completely off. 5, 9 is my first point. So 5, 9 is my first solution. And now i got to figure out the 1. So let's do the same thing. x equals negative 1. So y equals 2 times negative 1 minus 1. So, oh, that looks like a parenthesis, not a 1. Okay, and so that actually equals negative 3. So our other point is negative 1, negative 3. And I can't leave it. i got to go up and do it. Okay, so I was kind of close with that one. But you can see you can't rely on your drawing to give you the right answer. But you still have to do the graph. Okay, all right. Now, if you are graphing a system of equations that are two conic sections, that's, this is the next sentence on the notes, then the systems can have 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4 solutions. And this first one that we're going to do does have 4 solutions. Are you ready? Luckily, I was nice in number 2. They're already in the right form. x squared plus y squared equals 64. Well, I hope you know that's a circle. I know it's a circle because they're both positive and they both have a 1 in front of them. And it's in the right form already because, remember, a circle, if you look back, you have to have a number on the other side. And then x squared minus y squared equals 8. That's going to be a hyperbola because the x squared or the y squared is negative. 
and it's not in graphable form. For, so first step, put both equations in graphable form. The first equation's fine, but the second one's not because a parabola has to equal one in order to graph it. So I'm gonna divide both sides by eight and that'll take care of that. So now it's x squared over eight minus y squared over eight equals one. Okay, so that now the second step is to graph both equations on the same graph. Okay, so now I'm gonna graph. All right, let me get my graph. Oops, I, I moved and didn't get it. Okay, and my two equations, my circle was x squared plus y squared equals 64. That means my center's at 0, 0, and I need to move 8 in every direction. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Remember, you square root the other side to find the radius. And because it's a circle, it has to be the same all the way around. Okay, so let's make our circle. Do as best you can. Okay, well that looks like a butt, but oh well. All right, and then we're going to graph our hyperbola, which I just figured out should be should look like this. Um, x squared over 8 minus y squared over 8 equals 1. The first thing I notice is that my x is the positive, so we're going to be a left-right hyperbola. Our center is 0, 0, which is good. And then I have to do the square root of 8. And I think the square root of 8, I didn't write it down, but let's see, I was counting by 4s here, is 3 point something. So I'm going to come over here. 1, 2, 3 in a little bit. 1, 2, 3. It's the same all the way around because they both have an 8 underneath them. Let's make our little hyperbola thing. We know it opens left to right. So we're going to go this way. So how many solutions are we expecting here? Oh, I did not draw that well. How many solutions? We're expecting four solutions. One here, one here, one here, and one here. So when we do the algebra, we should have four solutions. Okay, that's where they cross. All right, so we did the graph. So now we need to do algebra. In this case, in most cases, you can eliminate. And I'm going to use elimination. I think elimination, I think I spelled it wrong before. I think it only has one L. Okay, so again, I go back to my original equations because they're easier. And if you stack them, you can see how quickly things are going to eliminate. So remember, elimination means when we add these two together, one of the variables go away, which they do. Now be careful here. This is 1 plus 1. So this is 2x squared equals 72. Okay, we're going to divide both sides by 2. So x squared equals 36. Now this is where the plus minus comes in. We're going to square root both sides. So our x's are going to be plus minus 6. Okay? This doesn't seem, this isn't going to be as difficult as the last one, actually. And then our last step is, step 4, is to find our y's. Okay, well, let's figure out. Let's pick an equation. I'm going to do x squared plus y squared equals 64. And I'm going to put a positive 6 in there. So I end up with uh, y squared equals 28. And if I square root both sides, I get this plus minus the square root of 28. And we actually have all what we need. This actually can simplify to y equals plus minus 2 root 7. Well, look what I have. I have all four solutions. If x is positive 6 y could be positive 2 root 7. If x is positive 6, y could be negative 2 root 7. If x is negative 6, y could be positive 2 root 7. If x is negative 6, y could also be negative. And there's our four solutions. So it sounds complicated, but because of that plus minus, if you think about it logically, you can get the four solutions pretty quickly. I apologize ahead of time. This video is going to be a little bit longer. Okay, let's go to number three. All right, so let's get them both in graphable form. So we have x squared plus y squared equals 64. That's a circle, so we're good. It's already in the right form. 
x squared plus 16y squared is an ellipse, and it's in the wrong form because it needs to equal 1. Okay, so this is an ellipse. And so we just need to divide everything by 64. Okay, could you imagine if I made you complete the square on these two? Ugh. Okay, that would be just mean. So then we have x squared over 64. 16 goes into 64 surprisingly even. We do that on purpose equals one. Okay, so now they're in graphable form. We're gonna use this to graph only, okay? And so now we're gonna graph both of them. So let's graph them and see how many solutions we're looking for. Okay, the circle center was at zero, zero, and then you had to square root the other side and that's eight on both sides. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I can't even see very well. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, then I make my circle as best I can. Now remember with an ellipse, we need to decide which is which. So the first thing is it's still at zero, zero is our center. Our major axis is the X because of the 64. Nice thing about this, the square root of 64 is eight, so we already marked that right here. The square root of four is two, so in the Y direction, we're gonna come out two. And then we make our little drawing. Isn't that a nice drawing? I like it. So in this situation, where do these two cross? These only cross in two places, so we're looking for two solutions here, okay? I'm gonna use elimination again, and I'm gonna go back to the original two problems. Ooh, okay, so I have X squared plus Y squared equals 64, and then I have X squared plus 16 Y squared equals 64. Well, something needs to be negative. So I'm gonna change that top one, and I'm gonna make it all negative. I'm gonna multiply the whole thing by negative one. Remember, you have to multiply everything. So this is what it looks like once we've multiplied by negative one, right? And this one we can just bring over as is. I hope this is bringing back memories of this lesson. Well, this turns out nice, because look what happens. Well, the x's go away. We're left with 15y, but that doesn't, where's y squared? That doesn't matter, because on the other side, we're left with a zero. So we can divide both sides, whatever, but y is zero, okay? If y is zero, so this time I eliminated the x, so the last step is to find my x's, okay? So then let's pick one. So x squared plus zero squared equals 64. X, this one you could have read from your graph because it's pretty obvious. So x equals plus minus eight. That means we're at eight, zero. And if you look at your graph, it makes sense. Negative eight, zero, okay? All right, we're not done. Now we have to do, if we're graphing inequality, these are the pretty pictures. If we're graphing two and they're inequalities, we have to graph them and we have to do some shading, okay? All right, we're almost done. I know my hand's hurting. System of quad quadratic inequalities are solved by graphing. That's what I'm reading off the notes right now, so you should be filling that in. So we don't have to do any algebra. We just have to graph and shade. Remember, a greater than and a less than have dashed lines. A greater than or equal to and a less than equal to the lines are solid. So let's look at number four. My hand is killing me from doing all this writing. Okay, y is greater than x squared plus one. Okay, I know immediately that's a parabola. We're missing a square, so that's a parabola. All right, that's a good form. And then we have a circle. Okay, you actually don't have to do test points on these. I'm gonna give you the hints as we go. So let's, whoa, that is not what I meant to graph. Hold on, it's because my hand's getting tired, but we're gonna finish this. Okay, I didn't choose it. Okay, the parabola is already in the right form, but the x, yeah, the x is squared, so it's y x squared. That means we have an upward facing parabola. I actually just put this in my calculator and looked at my table to see what numbers I needed. So the vertex is at zero, one. Okay, so here's the vertex. And then I got, went from there and I looked and it looks something like this. Oh, but it needs to be dotted. And y is greater 
So the place where Y is going to be greater is on the inside. So I'm going to shade the inside of this. You could do a test point if you're not sure. But since y is greater, y is going to always be greater on the inside than the outside because we, as we move up, we're eliminating the bigger y's from the outside. Okay, now we're going to do our circle. Our circle is at 0, 0, and it comes, oh, is it, why am I, yeah, it's at 0, 0. I did it wrong on here. And it comes out 3 on both sides. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. It is a solid line. Okay, here's how you know. If the if it's less than, if the little x squared plus y squared is less than, you're going to shade inside. If it's greater than, you shade outside. So because it's less than, again, you can do test points, but I'm going to shade on the inside of this. And where does my overlapping shading happen? In here. And so you guys are going to have to do something to indicate where your overlapping shade overlapped shading is. Okay, so you can see my orange. So that's my solution. Any number in that shade, any ordered pair in that shading will make them both true at the same time. One more to do. Okay, if you want to pause and come back later, I don't blame you. I wish I could, but I really want to just finish this. All right. Whoa, what just happened? Number five is x squared plus y squared is less than 36. I already know that's a circle. And the reason I know it's a circle they're both positive and they both have a one coefficient and that's going to be an easy circle to graph. 4x squared plus 9y squared is greater than 36. Well, I know this is an ellipse, but it's in the wrong form. The reason I know it's an ellipse is there's no negative and there's um, a different number in front of the x squared and the 9 squared. So I, in order to get it graphable, I need to divide everything by 36 here. And so now I have x squared over 9 plus y squared over 4, because remember an ellipse has to be equal or has to have 1 on the other side, okay? I don't know why I drew my 1. All right, ready? Let's graph. Last graph of the day. Let me try again. This one comes out nice, actually. So let's graph the circle. The circle was 0, 0 center. 6 was its... Um, Radius 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Let's look at it again. It's a dotted line. And it says the, the equation is less than 36. So that means we're shading on the inside. If it was greater than, we'd be shading on the outside. Okay, so you just have to kind of practice that. It just makes sense if you think about it logically where to shade. If not, we could always done a test point zero zero and see if that made the equation true. If it did, shade on the inside. Okay. All right, let's graph our ellipse. Our ellipse, our center cent is zero zero. It looks like we go out n oh three. I almost said nine. Remember, we have to use the and I can't see my points anymore. One, two, three. One, two, three, I should have used a different color. And then in the Y we go out four, or no, square root of four, which is two. And then we do that. Oh, supposed to be dotted, let me take that off. If that happens, do you want to test? Oh, I took the shading off too. If that happens to you on a test, you can always just draw a line and say supposed that's supposed to be dashed, okay? Because I know it's hard to erase it. And especially if you're using pen and colors, which I don't care about. Um, you might just need to draw, oh, that was supposed to be dashed. So let me fix it so it's dashed. Okay. Now that one says the equation is greater than 1. So that means we have to shade on the outside of this. So this drawing makes a donut. And so where are the solutions? Oh, look, it made that dark blue area. The donut shape is the solution for that inequality. Isn't that pretty?